Hey guys, this is Klaus from Team Oshigumi, and today we'll be doing deck profile on Dark Chronicles. Alright, let's get started with my grade 0 lineup. As my starter, I use my Chrono Dren. I run two copies of them. One Uwatar. Two Hypnosis Sheep. Three Heart Thumb Critical Triggers. Three Chrono Volley Rabbit Critical Triggers. Three Pulsar th uh, Thruster Bison Critical Triggers. And lastly, a playset of the Chrono Therapy Hamster. Now moving on to my grade ones. I run one copy of GG. One copy of Steam Maiden Meshia. Two copies of Pulsar Tamer Kagal. Three copies of Pulsar Transit Dragon. Three Draco Kid, the Strike Fodder for DTB. And a playset of Arca PG. This is like the MVP PG for Deer Chronicles right now. Moving on to my grade twos. I run two uh, Duplex Dragon. I call him the Suplex. Two of the Spearhead Unicorn, because unicorns do exist. Three of Chronospin Serpent. And the Grade 2 MVP. Uh, a playset, a Pulsar Cruising Dragon. Now lastly, moving on to my Grade 3 lineup. I run one Pulsar Obstinacy Ox. Really good card in my opinion. Two Kotil. Fuck another great, great three in the fucking game right now for Fury Chronicles. And lastly, the real MVP of the deck, Chrono Jet Dragon G. This skill is so free that you need it in the deck. Alright, moving on to the Strike deck. The Strike Zone, Generation Zone, whatever you want to call it. I run a playset of Fear Next. Of course, it's SP. Uh -huh. Two of next stage because next stage is still Bay. Two Ebony of Phoenix. One Split Pegasus. One Sea Breeze. One Metapulsar Altered Dragon. Then one Pong Long. One. But, uh, high bro steam uh, retina one interdimensional dragon head around and lastly two retroactive time made in a river in my opinion the last spot where i put the Quan lawn you could always replace this out for another uh, split pegasus or you could put in another altar dragon or Mystery Freeze Dragon. Mystery Freeze Dragon won't be too bad of an idea to as a finisher, but keep, keeping you hats up that it, it is cost heavy and you get to bind four cards. So, you know, your choice on that. Alright, now this is a disclaimer. At this point on, I'm going to talk about combos or certain comments or my personal opinions about certain cards. So, if you work for the deck recipe, if you're here only for the deck recipe, this is the end of it. So, Please feel free to, you know, skip or end the video at this point. But give it a like, like give it a thumbs up, you know, if you like the video and you learn from it. Alright, so guys, let's talk about combinations and whatnot and key cards in this deck now. Now, I'll start with my first turn stride. You thought it was going to be Avenue Phoenix, then you're completely wrong. It's actually Split Pegasus. Avenue Phoenix will be my first turn stride on very, very rare occasions and very specific occasions. Most generally, I would go Split on the first turn. And here's the reason why. Let's say your Chrono Jet, uh, you have Dran out, and you have nothing else out. Whatever, fuck all else. You stride into Split Pegasus, time leap this son of a bitch, and put it into Soul. So we'll go Transit Dragon, and once it goes into Soul, Chrono Jet. I usually have three Counter Blasts open at this point. So I Counter Blast one, send this to the bottom of the deck, and then I call out two Transit Dragons. 
So, and then generally I would have, you know, one, one more transit dragon in my hand or something else. But idealistically, let's, for this occasion, let's pull out the other transit dragon for this current demo. So, hey, at this point, I already had full, and now I have complete full field from doing nothing, from timing one fucking unit. Now, I'll tag with, at, at the end of this fucking turn also, you will gain seven cards. Look. So attack with this, counter blast one, with the top three cards, add a ZTB card to my hand, let's add the fucking heal. Skill, soul, draw another card, attack with the vanguard, trigger check, top three cards. Wow, triple crit. Wow, look at that. And then on top of it, attack again, counter blast one again, look at top three card again. And I'm gonna try next turn, let's add this baby to my hand, bottom of the deck, skill, goes to soul, draw another card. And mind you, now in this scenario, I didn't have any cards in my hand, but at the end of it, I will have now seven cards. That is so good. Meanwhile, Ebony of Phoenix, all it will do is fucking... Let's see. Where is Ebony of Phoenix? Ebony of Phoenix, however, would have only done this. Flip face up when your Vanguard attacks. So... Yeah, you can get multiple tags, blah, 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 argue with that bullshit, but you're not going to have a defensive hand. So, that's stupid. Attack, counter blast one, blech. Look at top five cards. Oh, okay, I'll choose two out of them. Okay, call this out, sure, I'll call this out. Add to the bottom. And then, yeah, hypothetically, I already tagged the John one, whatever. And now, Ranger attacks, one, two, three. We stand 16. Yeah, attack. Draw top three. And we get top three. Choose one. Add one to hand. Put the rest to the bottom. Alright, so now I only have five cards. Yeah, you attacked twice. Well, three times, whatever, including the we stand. But at what cost? You don't get the two cards that you could have used for defense next turn. In my opinion, it doesn't add up. It, it's not it's not worth it so my suggestion first turn stride always go with the split pegasus they tell you Ebony or phoenix then they don't really play in your carnivals too much all right moving on to the next bullshit conversation now the mvp cards all right the reason why i run four of cruising dragon i know that some of you guys will be like well in japanese meta they run four duplex dragon instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Field manipulation is good. Blah, 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 blah. But you have a soul blast and you bind a card. That is such a situational card that you don't need to run fucking four of. Two is plenty. Like, I, I played against, like, fucking Royal Paladins. I played against, like, Link Jokers. Like, those kind of cases, yeah, it comes in handy. And yeah, but I wouldn't use, I still wouldn't run four. Because you're going to Soul Blast out the ass, and you need Soul Blast for Gear Next and a couple of your other cards. So, fuck that. Don't do that. Run four of these, because you're going to have Counter Blast open majority of the time. You use the advantage of this fucking card to draw a card, so you'll every turn, at the end of your fucking turn, you will at least have at least eight cards or more by using Cruising Dragon. Transit Dragon, yeah, you need to run three of that. Three or four. But I run three, because I run Hagal instead. Because Hagal, this is another reason why I fucking Soul Blast is important. Because I can Soul Blast, yeah, I can Soul Charge 2 with it, but I don't. if I don't need to, I'm not going to. Hagal skill, you Soul Blast, you put this to the bottom of the deck, choose one card from your drop zone, return it to the bottom of the deck with it. So there's your fucking tick away dragon substitute now. So fucking good. Now the MVP is this fucking Ox, where it's auto skill, it gains 1000 for each face up G zone card. And counter blast active skill, you gain another thousand for every face up. So you're getting two thousand pretty much by counter blasting for every face up card in your G zone. So you can make a brick, a fucking great wall of fucking gear next right there with this shit. Next turn, uh, next thing we talk about battle sheep, uh, battle sheep, hypnosis, hypnosis sheep. It's really good due to the fact that once you attack, well, once your uh, ZTB attack, what you can do is put this to the soul, choose another unit to the bottom of the deck. And it gets to restand. So there are occasionally when I use that as a finisher. Obviously, I wouldn't use Transit Dragon in here. I would actually call out a trigger usually, some sort of trigger, so that after they boost, let's say I boosted Dragon, and then I'll 
attack my Vanguard, uh, stack all my crits and shit onto here. Then attack, they block it, fine, block me. Soul charge, send a trigger to the bottom of the deck so I can use that next next time when I, my deck gets shuffled. And we stand this shit and attack again. It is pretty broken, but it is really, it's just, so abuse it. If it's broken, abuse the fuck out of it. That's all you gotta know about. Um, I already did the gold. Alright, last but not least. Well, not maybe not last. But some of you guys might be wondering, when I did my deck recipe, why the fuck are you still running Heart Thump Worker? It's not a ZTB trigger. Where is my reasoning, my dear friend? Because Heart Thump is not a ZTB. When you do Cruising Dragon, you don't have to you don't have to edit to your hand or and you can just keep your deck. And yeah, you're like, oh well you don't have to take it. Well that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But here's another reason why. There are cases when ZTB is playing against like Link Joker or whatever, right? And let's say they locked, locked uh have this unit out here and you know locked. Well, you see, here's what I'll do. When my Vanguard attacks, like your next attacks. I would not support it with the first time. I can use this soul charge, uh, soul charge on top of it, and draw a card and give it five thousand. Or the fucking fact that when I attack the second time, it gains the seven thousand, ten thousand on soul skill own, own skill, and then soul charge and draw a card, get five thousand again. That shit, my man. That would be thirty six, forty three, forty eight thousand just because of that. Yeah, and you can argue, well, ZTB triggers are better at this point. There's no point, blah, 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 blah. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut the fuck up and get out of my channel. That's pretty much it in terms of that. Just heart thump. Think about it. It comes in handy. And you know Chaos Breaker is coming back soon. So fucking use the, uh, abuse the shit out of it. Alright, Bison. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Soul Charge. Get 3,000 to your rear guard. Good. Kotel is really good due to the fact that it comes out from timely, it gains 3,000, and if there's no face up counter blast, you counter charge one. Uh, 10k is still relevant. Don't say it's not, because you don't know what you're talking about. 10k's are useful against like rush decks, like blaster decks, fucking sometimes, like, let's go with Noah Grabblers. Kind of comes in handy every now and then. Um, split, not split. The Unicorn, because unicorns do exist, is useful. Because when he attacks, he gains 2,000 if you have a Chrono Jet Vanguard, and you counter blast one. So get top top cards equal to the amount of ZTB units on the field, and choose one out of them and call it out to the rear guard. So in an ideal world, you call this unit out, use it use its skill, and call out another fucking Cruising Dragon, and call him out 11k, and then draw another card. So useful. Oh, right, and you might be wondering, why are you running Meshvia and Gigi? Those aren't ZTB related cards. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely fucking right. But here's the times where, like, you gotta think about when you time you go grade zero to a grade one, and you want and you don't have anything else in your fucking hand. Why not time you to these two, one of these two units, so you can draw, so you can call out another fucking unit on top of it. Believe it or not, this deck right now that I have hasn't been defeated yet in any of my locals, and I played against other tier one rush decks, fucking Grand Blues, fucking Luards, fucking Blade, <laughs> Blade Wings, and couldn't even keep up with my deck. And fucking, you know, autopilot Royal Paladins, because they ain't shit. Yeah, I said it. Royal Paladins ain't shit, Ellie. Anyways, but yeah, it comes in handy. Time to grade 0 to grade 1, and draw a card. Because, you know, grade 1 to grade 1, time to meet is not a thing anymore for me. But, yeah, enough about me bitching and moaning and calling every other clan shit, and everyone hating on me and giving me a thumb down. That's about it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Sorry for all the shit talking. Um... If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment below. I will try my best to respond to it in a fashionable manner. And uh, feel free to talk, comment below how much salt you guys have for about me having my deck SP'd out, especially the Arca SP. Uh, shout out to Patrick O'Donnell Design. This playmat was designed by my sponsor, Patrick O'Donnell. And uh, this is custom design. You know, I thought about the art and everything, but he helped me, you know, make it real, make it happen, and all that shit. It looks beautiful for my ZTB, and uh, I'm pretty sure it looks better than all your fucking play mats. So, feel free to ask Patrick O'Donnell, O'Donnell to design your fucking mat, you little scrub. Alright, that's about it for today, guys. Hit that like button if you learned something, or if you like the uh, emotional abuse I do from shit talking. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you filthy bitch, subscribe. Alright, guys. Peace.